Hi, this is Tidhar. Today I will explain you about the triggers in Oracle. Triggers is same like a stored procedure, PL SQL stored procedure, but it is this one is automatically invoked when a particular event occurs. The event might be uh, DML operations or it may be uh, DDL operations or in the event may be uh, you immediately log into the database that is called log on triggers and you after you logged out of the database that is called log out triggers so there are several events and for which for particular event a trigger can be invoked so trigger basically it will be invoked on a particular event occurs so that is called triggers it will be automatically invoked today in this session we will be discussing about the dml triggers dml triggers means after a particular DML operations are performed or before a particular DML operations are performed. DML operations in the sense uh, insert, select, uh, update, not select, insert, delete or update kind of operations. So before and after insert or delete or update operations, the trigger will be invoked. Basically this trigger can, will be uh, differentiated into two types. One is statement level trigger and another one is row level trigger. Statement level trigger statement level triggers it is uh, also called as a table level triggers so this this trigger will be invoked based on the table so it will be invoked only once on the table and the uh, next one is a row level triggers this trigger will be invoked invoked to the number of times the dml operations are performed to the equal number of times the dml operations are performed so statement level triggers in statement level triggers the trigger body will be executed only once even if there are zero number of DML operations or even if there are n number of DML operations but the trigger body will be executing only one times but in row level trigger the trigger body will be executed based on the number of times the DML operations are performed if there are no DML operations are performed then the trigger body will be executing zero times the execution order of the trigger is before statement level and uh, before row level after row level and after statement level statement level will be coming first and last and in between that row level triggers before and after will be coming and the syntax of this trigger is create or replace trigger trigger name like a procedure create or replace and before or after when the event occurs so the trigger should be invoked before the event or after the event so you have to specify before or after the DML operations whether insert or delete or update before insert or before delete or before update of column name if you if you are specifying column name then if you are updating or inserting or doing any kind of DML operations of this column then this trigger will be invoked on table name on this table this trigger is written so only on this table a particular event occurs then this trigger will be invoked so on table name for each row this class will be coming only if this is a row level trigger otherwise it won't be coming we can omit this one for statement level trigger and when condition you can also specify some condition in this condition you can also include qualifiers qualifiers will discuss briefly while discussing on row level triggers and declare the variable declaration begin and end inside begin and end you can give the any PL SQL code. The before trigger, if it is a before trigger, then the trigger body will be executing only once. And sorry, before trigger means the trigger body is executed before the DML statements are affected into the database. If you are inserting any values, then before inserting the values, the trigger will be executing. And after trigger means the trigger body will be executing after the DML operations are performed, after the DML operations are affected into the database. So this is the main concept of before and after trigger. Mainly we, you are using before trigger if you want to restrict some invalid data we will be using before trigger and if you want to do some audit kind of operations we will be using audit after trigger. Means if you are doing some operations on one table then then you have to do some DML operations on other table. Basically if you are performing some operations on one table and we want those operations to be affected on another table then you will be writing after trigger. It is mainly used for audit purpose mainly if you are doing some modifications in one table then we will be the trigger will be invoked in such a way that you are doing this kind of uh, 
DML operations on this table at this time. So this entry will be entered into some other table. So that table will be used for auditing purpose. The statement trigger trigger, the main points to be noted for statement trigger trigger is the trigger body is executed only once irrespective of the number of records getting affected. Even if there are n number of DML operations performed, only one time the trigger body will be executing. Even if there are no DML operations are performed, even then the trigger body will be executing only once. And by default, all the triggers are statement level triggers. If you want to write row level triggers, then you will be you should write for each row. Otherwise, by default, all the triggers are statement level triggers. And in statement level trigger, you cannot explicitly mention for each row. Okay. And in statement level trigger, you can't give the correlation identifiers. It is colon old and colon new, which is what I mentioned here in condition. You can write the qualifiers in the condition. You cannot use the correlation identifiers or the qualifiers colon old and colon new in statement level trigger. If you are writing statement level trigger, you cannot use the colon old and colon new qualifiers. It will be used only in row level trigger and we will discuss about that in the while discussing the row level triggers. So these are the main concepts of statement, trigger, statement level trigger. I have some sample program for statement level trigger. I am writing a statement level trigger. Before that, get into the student uh, table. The student table has student number, name and gender. If you get into the data, student number, name are populated, but the gender, whether it is male, female or not populated. So I want to write trigger. I'm just writing a trigger to print the value. Just a statement level trigger is invoked. I want to show you how many times the statement level trigger is invoked. So for that, I am just updating, updating the gender value. The first 101, 101 ID is Shelly. So I am updating it as F. So I am doing some update statement. If I am doing some update statement, the trigger should be invoked. Trigger is nothing but just am printing a statement saying that statement level trigger is invoked. That's all. So for that, I am writing the trigger on student table create or replace trigger or trigger name trigger trigger name so before update i'm going to write before update of the gender value not the gender value gender column before update of the gender column on which table on students table begin just i'm printing the statement statement level trigger is invoked end so how many times it will be invoked even if there are no DML operations, it will be invoked only one time. If there are n number of DML operations also, it will be invoked only one time. Let us check. Compiled. I am doing the update statement for 101 ID generates F. Updated. It's executed only one time. The trigger is executed only one time. Statement level trigger is executed on the student's table. Let me check in the student table. Yes, F is updated, but here it is only one update statement. Next one follows three update statement. Here, let us check how many times the trigger is invoked. Statement level trigger is invoked. It's completed. If you see here also only one time it is invoked. If you want, let me clear the output and run it again. Since it is update statement, you can run any number of times. Updated. Only one time. Even if there are three DML operations, three update statements, it will be statement level trigger will be executing only one time. And that's all about the session. We'll be discussing more about the statement level trigger with a few frequent ex some examples in the next session. Thanks.